Peace, blessings, and black love, black family. This is Amaja Awetu coming to you black at it again. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And this one, this is just an audio, so you really don't have to worry about looking at your screen. Here is where we're going to talk about how men are walking around with the pain of being raised by many by raised by their single mothers and how they were treated under the tutelage and the upbringing of their mothers. When I say certain things, I'm giving you guys the psychology of it. I'm giving you the intent. Women break their sons. I'm not saying the daughters are not affected. I'm saying both children are affected. However, it's more detrimental to the male because the male is not supposed to bow. The male is supposed to stand, stand strong and stand tall. It's okay if the female bows because by default, if she aligns herself with the right male, he will do all the standing for her and he will teach her how to come out of it. On the other hand, the women don't teach the men how to come out of it. They beat the men down and then they try to effeminize or make the men more subservient. So if a man is supposed to be a protector and his mother breaks him, the women are not going to try to uplift him. The women are not going to try to undo what his mother did. For the most part, they're going to compound on to what the mother did. The women get a pass because women are moldable. M women are more malleable. So though, even though the mother's tactics apply to both genders, it just hurts the male more. This is why you don't really hear have anybody saying much about the female. Well, it hurts us too. And it does. It's just that since there are so many systems to help the female, on average, they get time to come out of it. Because they can get under the tutelage and the protection and the cover of another male. They can get under the tutelage, protection, and cover of other women. They can get under the tutelage, protection, and the cover of of the system itself, white supremacy, government, or battered shelter, or battered sh sheltered or something, where men, males, we don't have that avenue. Whatever happens to us, happens to us, and everybody's allowing us to flail in the wind, figure it out like a fish out of water. What I'm trying to do, is I'm always trying to do, is I'm trying to explain to you how you are broken, why you are broken, and how do you come out of it. Everybody has their own background. Everybody has their own origin story. So I can't say I need to hear every last single person's perspective on how they got here. I can tell you what works and how to come out of it. And these are the ways in which you come out of it before I go any further, which I will, re will say again. This is how you come out of it. You got to go to work. You got to get around other men. And you got to learn from other men. And you're going to have to separate yourself from all women, especially your mother. Your mother is the one that's anchoring you to your pain. Your mother is the one that's anchoring you to your deficiencies. Your mother is the one that's coddling you, cradling you. Your mother is the one that's not allowing you to go out there and figure it out. Your mother is the one keeping you from going to your uncle's house, whether they're a blood relative or not. Your mother is the one keeping you from getting around other men, close males, that have the potential to teach you how to come out of it. The mistake that black women are making is they're using the it takes a village to raise a, 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 a child. They're using that against you. It only takes a village if the village is on one accord, meaning we're all doing the same thing and we keep our children safe. We're all abiding by the rules and we're keeping our children safe. We're, we are all abiding by the policies and we're keeping our children safe. What black women are doing is saying it takes a village to raise a child because they don't want to do what the village, rule, village rules are. And one of the village rules is a woman must get married. If you have a child... You are to marry the man in which you got pregnant by. That's one of the village rules. The women are trying to avoid the marriage aspect and say, since men are in the neighborhood, since men are um, somewhere in the environment, then the men should help me. 
Well, if she's out here, she's a whore. If she's out here, she's a harlotan. If she's out here and she's misbehaving, disobedient, and she's using all these ropes, all these 911s, all these get out of jail free cards, how does the female learn from her bad decisions or bad behavior if she has all of these avenues of, of, of assistance? Well, we male, we men, we understand that if you give them a rope, if you, we male, we men, we understand if you give them an inch, they will take a mile. They're not trying to self-correct and they're not trying to course correct. So even though it takes a village to raise a child, quote or, 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 or statement makes sense, the women are using it inappropriately. It only takes a village to raise a child if the entire village is move, moving in unison and we are not. We are all scattered brains. So what I got on this video is I wanted you guys to hear how older men, middle-aged men, young adult men have experienced trauma stemming from their mother's bad decisions. And the reason why you have to emphasize the males over the female is because if nature is allowed to run its course, the men can fix the female. It isn't the female gets fixed, then she fixed the male. The nature doesn't work that way. Science doesn't work that way. Biology doesn't work that way. The nature, the science, the biology says if you can fix the men, then the female will acquiesce to the rules, system, structure, and order of the men. What the women are trying to do is, is they're trying to stay in charge. And by default, in order to stay in charge, you automatically know you got you to gotta keep that that's supposed to have the throne that that's supposed to have the power from ever acquiring said power. When I say to you guys, white supremacy racism is the exact same or similar or very close to um, African matriarchy. I'm explaining to you there are too many similarities for us to ignore them. We can no longer ignore them. The women are in position of power. The women are, women are only in positions of power because weaker men are giving them the power. Black women only have the power because weaker men have abdicated the throne. They don't want it. And I keep explaining to you the weaker males. Weaker males outnumber the stronger males. And as long as weaker males are running the show, majority rules. I want you guys to listen to these males and, ex and experience their trauma. Some of us have the exact same trauma. It's just that we have different coping mechanisms. But we all have that pain. We are all suffering from black male hatred. Black men have black male hatred. I want to say this so you can guys understand it. We hate black men. We hate each other. And it's stemming from pain. It's stemming from abandonment issues. It's stemming from our mother's bad decision and choices that she made in her youth. Roll the tape. Got some brothers here who are uh, in the bullpen. Steve, Sir Haley speaks. What's up, brothers? How you doing, man? What's up, man? How you doing today, sir? Well, how are you, sir? Good to see you. And thanks for letting me up. Oh, man. It's a pleasure having you here, man. This is a tough conversation. Let me. What's your thoughts on this conversation, bro? Well, you got me like I, I was just listening in, but you said something at the very end that really got me. You said that, that men... If you lost out on that love from mama, mm -hmm. you can't go try to find a woman and fix her. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the loop that so many men find themselves in. Because you know how we typically say that daughters, you know, a dad is a daughter's first love. Like she's going to pick a man based off of her mm -hmm. dad. Very rarely do our heroes say that in the reverse. That mama is that boy's template. And he's going to pick a woman like his mama. Right? Which is, which is re really interesting because... A lot of mothers have an issue with their potential daughters-in-laws and can see all of their flaws and mm -hmm. don't realize that what her son picked is a copy of what he saw growing up. So what she doesn't like in that potential daughter-in-law is really the, the things that he saw in her. And that's why he chose her, because it was what was familiar. So that and you know, really got me. Yeah, I want to I wanna share with you something. I've talked about this before. The reason you got black men running away from black women these days, because it used to be men used to want a woman like their they mom. You know, we you, it used to be we wanted a mom, woman like our grandmother, our mother. We wanted that. That's normal. But 
when black men deal with black American women who remind them of their mothers, and those black American women use those same trigger words and that same attitude and that same, you, you could, I can, it does something to you. It, it goes deep down into your soul and you just, you just flee away from that. It's to the point now, even if you hear a woman who sounds like your mother, you don't want to be around them. That's how traumatized some of these black men were. They did everything they could to deal with it, and then they finally got a chance to get away, and they got away. And they don't want to have nothing to do with their mom. A lot of these dudes, a lot of these blackity blacks, these pro-black, they think brothers are running over to these white women and Asian women and Latino women because of the color of their skin. No, they're running over there because what? even though those women have issues, the issues that they have don't remind them of the issues they had growing up as a child. You see, Even you already have, have it, your relationships are already going to be tough enough. And that's why these, uh, that's part of the reason. These dudes don't like their moms, man. I, I, I don't have no other way of saying it. A lot of these black men do not like the way they were treated by their mothers. Most of them, they would never tell you up until this manosphere thing started. Uh, but now they're speaking freely. Um, thanks, brother, brother Speaks. Mr. Steve, man, always good to have you in here. Mm, uh, what would you like to share with this? Man, this uh, yeah. When I seen Scrappy Man, it just, it's just, it's so common, right? Mm. And uh, he brought something up that's very important. He brought up the isolation. Who mm. are you going? Who do you talk to? Are you supposed to talk? You get shamed in the community if you say anything about your mom. Pretty much, it's, you're pretty much you're you're a sucker, damn near. Like what you said that about your mom whole time. You're getting it's and, and let me say, Scrappy's really the good part of like he's the top tier of that of this. Mm -hmm. He's the top tier. I know some men emasculated before they was eighteen in my family. Done, cooked, forever subservient. Because their mom dominated them, and, and, and now it's normal. Mm -hmm. And then, like, this goes back to the original thing where are the good men at? Mm -hmm. Well, you, they never made it. <laughs> you brought up something very important. And in, 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 the, in the black community, uh, the black woman is the sacred cow. Like, the <sighs> sacred cow of India, like, they got all them cows out in the road, and you can't, you right. gotta drive around the cow. You can't touch her. You can't say anything about it. That's why you got dudes who wrote rap songs 20 years ago. Even if you was a crack fiend, you still a black queen. That don't match. You it heard don't. this boy right here. And this boy is y'all's age. See, he's 38. He's a youngin. You see what I mean? He he just stepping into his manhood. That's what y'all dealing with. You see what I mean? I had to deal with it too. You see what I mean? Because, you know, my generation, we're well, growing up in L.A., I had a it was it was a little bit more advanced than what the rest of the country. New York, L.A., we was dealing with that drug, that crack issue. We was dealing that with a little bit, but now the rest of America is having to deal with it. Shout out to my man Vince Robinson. But yeah, you can't say nothing about these women. They haven't never been held. Uh, they've never been held accountable for what they've done. And now we're finally doing it. And what do they call? Oh, this is y'all just hate. This is hate. Y'all hate the black women. No, us telling you. This is our pain. We're telling you. It's, see, let me get up close. It's okay for you black men to emote. It's perfectly acceptable for you to speak on your pain. You're human beings. You understand? And, 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 and I think it's important that I continue doing this because I'm a father. You understand? I'm a heterosexual man. I'm a father. You understand what I mean? But I'm telling you, it's okay. If my sons were coming to me telling me this, I would not judge them. I'm not going to call you a punk or weak or telling you you ain't shit or suck it up. I'm going to say, talk to me, son. Because if you don't talk to me about it, you're going to hold that in and eventually you're going to explode on another black man because you're not going to fight with a woman because remember, that's the queen mother goddess. You're going to take all your anger out on another black man. That's what happens. That's why we got so much. That's why I got so many ticking time bombs in the black community right now. I'm telling you, I know, I understand you boys, you young men, y'all not boys. I understand. I wrote a whole chapter in my book called Angry Black, Angry Young Men, because this is what we were dealing with. I had an outlet. I had football. Some of y'all don't have that. You know what you got? You got the streets. 
You look for every opportunity to exercise that anger on somebody else because these women get you gassed up. They send you out in them streets at 11, 12, 13, 14 years old, and you just out there. And then what happens when you get in a relationship with a woman, your baby mama, girlfriend, who does the same thing to you? She gets you gassed up, and now you in prison. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's a never-ending story. You're supposed to have peace, Steve, but let's get I want to get everybody in. Uh, Philip Jameson, thank you so much, sir. It's always good to have all you brothers in here. I appreciate the Let's honest see. conversation, man. We're here for healing. That's what we're here for. We're here for healing. You're not judged on this page. I tell y'all all my business when it comes to that. You understand? And so if I'm willing to tell you this, I'm a lawyer. I'm successful. All this bullshit that they say, I'm that guy. So if I'm telling you I've had to deal with it, it's perfectly acceptable for you to speak openly about your issues. But go ahead, Brother Philip. What are your thoughts on this conversation, that video? We got a lot of red meat out there for you. Yeah. Uh, good to see everybody. Just want to say that. Salute to the whole panel. Good to see all the brothers here, man. Yes, it's sir. real, man. That, that, it's real talk, man. It's unfortunate because a lot of us went through it, man. It's funny, like what Steve was saying, man. Like, that's so true in the black community, man. You better mm -hmm. not ever mention nothing you went through, man. Or you're going to instantly be demonized. And especially if you consider the fact that there's so many matriarchs. I mean, it's kind of like... Like Scrappy said, I mean, who I'm going to talk to? My girl? My sister? Mm -hmm. My grandma? My aunt? My female cousin? You know, uh, a prostitute? No, no, I don't want to listen to. You know what I'm saying? When you get mm -hmm. to the point, man, where it's just, you know, so many of us black men dealt with that. And, you know, like how you were saying earlier, man, like, I really do appreciate brothers like you. I wanted to say that mm -hmm. too. Someone was up with the super chat. But, man, what you said was so real, man. We got to look to brothers like you because our mothers, I ain't, I ain't know my dad. I never met him. You know what I'm saying? Right. I know plenty of cats like me. Like, if we don't go to gravitate to dudes like you, like, who we going to go to? Derek Jackson? You know what I'm saying? Like, we got to have brothers like you. But it's like, when you look at it, man, like, my mama was a crackhead, bro. And you know what I'm saying? Mm. That's something, even though my mama, like every time I try to bring it up to her, she would deny it. But it's funny how when we go, like when I visit my family in South Carolina, like it's funny how you will have that queen mother goddess chip. But like when you talk to your family, they be like, yo mama, she yeah. been getting down. We been yeah. the crackhead. We, you know what I'm saying? It's like most of us grew up with what little Scrappy grew up with, man. Like I can recall being a dope process when I was young, just thinking that we was just there. You know, so I remember used to be a cat my mom used to go to every week named Joe Kelly. We used to call him Joe Belly. Man, it wasn't until I was about, you know, I'm 32. It wasn't until I was about 25 nights to realize, like, you know what? All them times when we ain't had no cereal, when we ain't had no food, I don't think my mama was just going over there saying hi to Joe Belly. Mm -mm. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm pretty sure over all them years, all them dope houses we went to, I'm pretty sure when that rent was due, my mama was doing what she had to do. And you know what I mean by that. You know, yeah. a lot of us brothers have mothers like that. And it's like funny how you say it. Like when you start to confront them, you know, I, you know, shout out to Kevin Samuels. That sign language was so real. It's like, I used to never know the word for it. Man, I done tried to confront my mom about 30 different times. I'm talking about midway through every single time. Ain't nothing but sign language, anger, her flipping the script. You know, I ain't talked to my mother in seven years, man. You know, a lot right. of people think that's weird, but it's like, instantly it's, it's going to go it, to the plane. It's like, not. It's not weird. It's not. It's I haven't, bro, I haven't talked to my mother in some years. It's a lot of other brothers who haven't talked to their mother in some years. Or not even, a, it could be your sister. It could be the woman who raised your auntie. It could be yeah, foster mother. You, Because they're all suffering from the same condition, they refuse to accept responsibility for their actions. Facts. They will not take accountability. That's to, Accountability is like, to, to women, is like sunshine is to vampire. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? It, it literally kills them. Now, I could go into the biological reason for why, they, you know, but but let me say it like this, and, and I don't want to take this off, but women throughout society, they needed to be the center of attention. They needed to be uh, looked up to. They needed to be, have all eyes on them because it was a matter of survival for them. So the women who were pushed out of the center of attention, off to the side and the left or whatever, they, they, they didn't survive. They were literally out there with the wolves and the bears, mm -hmm. you see? So when you try to get a woman to accept fault, to try to get her to accept shame and be shunned and right. pushed away, it, it triggers something in her mind. That's why you have these religions that are so hardcore, these old time religions that I'm not talking about this new wave Christianity. I'm talking about that old Christianity that 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 that, that King that, James. Yeah, yeah, that that no that that <laughs> uh, that old testament, yeah, or that holy Quran. You see what I'm saying? Or that, that Torah, which would have those really strict requirements on women. 
because those old men knew that they understood female nature. You know, we in these modern times, we've letting it go on too far. We too soft. And as far as black men, we're the softest of the soft as far as when it comes to when we let too much slide. You, I tell you guys all the time, you're too nice. You're too easy to get along. And that has a lot to do with that queen mother goddess scepter. The main thing Real you got to understand is like, I'm telling you guys, I, I, I mean, I've, I've dealt with that shit myself. You, you see what I'm saying? So it's all of us. You got you got rappers, you got lawyers, you got you got truck drivers, you got dudes off the streets, you got students. We've all dealt with this. This is not something they could just say, oh, you're just a defective black man. You see, they always want to put it's the high value man, as Kevin would say, it's the blue Henry's, it's the it's the homeboy on the corner. It, it, it's all of us have had to deal with this. And, it, and the thing that I want you guys to understand is you survived something. This is not, I don't want you guys to stop giving these women credit for putting you through these traumatic experiences. You survived this. This is not how women are supposed to behave. They were out of order. They were out of pocket. They were wrong. But the other thing I need you guys to understand, and we're going to go to my man, Lord Geotron, in a minute. What I want you guys to understand is that as long as you're looking for these women to be accountable for their actions, they got you trapped because you still got to keep going back to them. It's the point where you say, I don't give a heck what the, I don't give a F what they think no more. That's when you free. I'm not looking for your validation, mom. 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 In my mind, you was wrong. So I'm not looking for your validation anymore. I'm free now. I can go about my business. That's what I want you guys to understand. Yeah, get your therapy, but stop trying to get a broken person to fix you. Because that's what you're trying to do. It ain't going to work. You're 38 years old. Like this, this boy, 38 years old. Little scrap. He's 38 years old. He's still looking for his mom to say she was wrong. And she's not because she's empty on the inside. She's a hollow person. That's what I'm trying to get y'all to do. Let it go. You ain't going to get it. Move on. Heal yourself. Be the best fathers you can be. Be good men to your wives if you decide to get one. Be kind men. Be loving. Be firm. You see what I mean? But stop looking to the past to try to heal your future. It ain't going to work. My man, Lord Giatron, always good to have you in here, brother. Give us some of that wisdom. Yeah, well, what are yeah. your thoughts on this conversation, brother? Um. Okay. Um. When Kevin Samuel passed, right? I was on JR Wisdom's podcast and I did something similar to what I'm about to say right now about my mom, my oldest sister, and my ex-wife. But mm -hmm. as far as the mother thing, bro, I got ripped off with a lot of that honor your mother, honor your father type nonsense. Mm -hmm. And my pops was a, a very wealthy man, a very high value man, one of them high octane men that Kevin mm -hmm. Samuels used to talk about. And my mom threw herself up under him, got married, Got blessed with four children by this man, mm -hmm. and, and and then ruined the marriage. Forced my dad, wind up losing everything, and then threw herself up under a nigga that she met who was homeless, who had a homeless chick, pregnant, and and living in a homeless shelter. Threw us up under this nigga, wind up breaking up their relationship, marrying this nigga. Our lives spiraled out of control. But mm -hmm. I just think about all the hurt and hardship that I went through. Moving out to the East Coast, the, the way them dudes down there in South Carolina and Georgia treated me and conducted themselves towards me. Then, aside from that, having to put up with the stepfather's family and the abuse that happened from along the way with that, combined with mom's self-centered, self-righteous, Order 66 self-destruction of all her son's retirement plan of her daughter's mentality that my mother had, bro. And then right. to top it all off, I'm named after my father, bro. I'm the junior. My mm -hmm. mom's told me the last time I spoke to her, and I haven't spoken to her since. Because in that scripture, it says, other first, then your mother. Right. All that shit that I went through because of my mother being dis disloyal and dishonorable to my father, all the shit that I went through because of that, she came out of her mouth and told me, junior, that she didn't love Lord Geotron Sr. Mm -hmm. As if that shit was mean something to fuck to me. The dishonor and disrespect that you showed my father combined with what I went through because of you doing that shit. 
and you told me you didn't love my my father was never your true love. This man took you and two kids in. He was rich, and you made this man lose fuck damn near everything, man. And then on top of that, I was telling Jr. Wisdom a few months back when Kevin Samuel died, my kid brother got murdered. And you want to know how he got murdered? Being involved with my mother, doing my mother's bidding, being sign language in the doing the stuff that she wanted him doing. And he, he walked around and got himself murdered, bro. And, and so I look at it like, bro, you know, I haven't spoken to my mother in over a year now. And I'm not going to speak to her. Because bottom line, she does stuff like, what did I do? Because she, when you say, when you answer that question, when she when she asks you why are you mad at her or why you, it ain't mad. It's not that I'm mad at you. You're getting what you deserve. Absence mm-hmm. For me, right. She'll, they'll say shit like to sign language you. They'll try to sign language you with, "What did I do so wrong?" Well, you should always forgive. If you answer that question, "What did I do so wrong?" You give her a rope to try to hang you. She'll she's laying bait out there for you to take that bait. It ain't you didn't you didn't do nothing wrong. Don't ask me what you did wrong. Ask me what you can do right going forward. Because if you answer, "What did I do wrong?" And that puts you in the wrong and that justifies her wickedness when she says, well, you should be you should be forgiven and all that type of shit. And I and I last time I spoke to my mother, I told her like this. For now on, don't try to form quotes and comments in the form of trying to have some type of authority over me. I'm my own man. I became this man on my own. And I mean more to me than you mean to me. I'm my own man more than you're my anything. And I'm my own man more than I'm anything to you. Straight up, and, I care about myself more than I care about you. You have the right. audacity to say to me, she had the audacity to say to me, all I want is for my kids to try to make me feel special. I'm like, the fact that I talk to you should feel special. The shit that I've been through in my life because of you, you should feel special that I talk to you. Well, here's what I got for you. I'm not your husband and I'm not your father. You're my mother. You're supposed to try to make me feel special. And you don't. My, I've been a fucking format my whole fucking life. Yo, um, I'm supposed to be a millionaire right now, man. I put in that work out here, bro. I'm coast to coast. I'm all over this country. Every time I hit your podcast, I'm on. I'm in a different city. I was in Detroit. I've been in Miami. I've been in Philadelphia. I'm traveling the country, working, working, busting my ass, plus doing promotion with these artists and stuff out here, bro. Mm-hmm. And, I remember and, you told us that. And can I? Can I? Yeah. Can I? Can uh, I hey, give you? Hey, can hey, I'm, I, I'm putting in that pain, bro. When you have a mother like that. You know, who's kind of trying to constantly flip the script and put it back on you and play dumb and pretend like she has amnesia and she don't know why you mad. That's just a trap. There's this old saying, and I, I, JJ might remember this, man. They had this old thing called the tar baby. Y'all remember, you ever heard of Br'er Rabbit? You ever heard of Br'er Rabbit? It was a little old timey cartoon back, back in the South. Um, every time you touch Br'er Rabbit, you got that tar on you. So even though you're trying to get rid of them, you fighting with Br'er Bear Rabbit, you just getting more tar on you. The best thing you do for people like that is leave them alone. Take your time, your resources, and your attention away from these. The best thing you do for people like that is leave them alone. Take your time, your resources, and your attention away from these. The best thing you do for people like that is leave them alone. Take your time, your resources, and your attention away from these. Best thing you do for people like that is leave them alone. Take your time, your resources, and your attention away from these people. Don't even waste your time with them. That, and and the last thing, and I want to, and I want to get everybody in so we can speak openly. Lord Giatron said this, and, and this was my finding, and this is what gave me the ultimate peace that I had. I recognize that I am God's child. I want to share with you something. Um, it says all the time, these preachers, they tell you all the time, what do they say? Honor thy mother and thy father, right? Basically, they use that Bible as a sword. That's Ephesians 6 and 2, honor your mother and father. That's Ephesians 6 and 2. Now, when you skip down to Ephesians 6 and 4, it says, fathers, do not provoke your children to rage or wrath, depending on how you look at it. So what that does is it tells the parents to do something, and it also tells, it tells the children to do something, but it also tells the parents to do something. 
what Lord, what many of your mothers are doing, what many of your fathers are doing, and remember back then the father ruled the family like you know you was damn near his slave. So that's why the mother was like a child. But now in these days we live in different times. So if you apply it to this time, you recognize in these equal time periods they equal. So this also applies to your mother. Mothers and fathers do not provoke your children to rage, and that's what many of y'all's parents have done to y'all, provoked y'all to rage. And that's not right. She's wrong. But you're never going to get these women to admit it. It's not going to happen. That's not where you're going to find your healing. That's what I wanted to say. Shot, what would you like to add to this conversation? Oh, man. First of all, how y'all doing? Um, I'm good, bro. Real, good. Real quick, man. There's an unnatural affection that we have for our mothers. There's an unnatural affection that we have for our mothers. There's an unnatural affection that we have for our mothers. There's an unnatural affection that we have for our mothers that must be severed, that must be severed, that must be severed, that must be severed, that must be severed. Sever. You just read a scripture that said, honor your mother and honor your father. The way we honor our mother is very unnatural. The way we honor our mother is very unnatural. The way we honor our mother is very unnatural. The way we honor our mother is very unnatural. It seems like we damn near, we, we, we treat everybody else like, okay, I can do without them in my life. Even my father, we treat our fathers as disposable. But when it comes to our mothers and her shortcomings, we have an unnatural affection for her. It's not normal. There's nothing normal about accepting abuse from anybody, no matter what the title is. So I say that to say this, that, you know, you brothers who had traumas with your mother and you still seeking her validation, brother, you, you have to let that, you have to let that be. It's unnatural to 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, you still acting like a boy. Now, I understand. I empathize. I empathize with you when it comes to you needing that validation. But we have to we have to sit shit like that to a side. If that's who she is, if she's trifling, if she's unforgiving, if she's haughty, if she's if she's come with such calamity, write her ass off. We don't do everyday women like that. We don't do that for random females we don't do that for our sisters our aunties write your fucking mom off man 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 you only get one life you only get one life and you're gonna spend that trying to win the affection of a woman whose heart been hard way before you was born again i ain't got much to say beloved but there's an unnatural affection that we have for our mother that's not normal it's kind of wicked. And you have to sever that fucking connection. Write your fucking mom off, man. Write your fucking mom off, man. Write your fucking mom off, man. But that's all I got, man. Um, good evening, everybody on the panel. Uh, one thing that I want to say is that I'm still in the healing process from a lot that has happened uh, throughout my life, especially uh, during my childhood. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm I'm learning how to come to grips with a lot of things like, you know, it took me a long time to really like understand what's going on and to fully accept things for how they are. Mm -hmm. And that's very important for the healing process. Like, I understand that there were certain situations that happened to me growing up that I had no control over. And I, you know, like, you know how they said that if you speak out about it, like, you know, and, and others find out you get labeled like is, is a, a sucker or, or a buster or whatever, just because right. you, you spoke your truth. Like, I've had that experience where I spoke my truth. And it was part of the reason why I went through a, a period of where I've been ostracized, you know, by certain individuals and, you know, like growing up. You know, I was pretty much being trained to be like a utility slash son husband. Mm -hmm. And, right. and that's unnatural. Trained, that's unnatural. Yeah. Like the brother. And, and also, also, you know, like um, 
my mother wanted me to date and be with the type of women she wanted me to be with and mm-hmm. not necessarily encouraging me to have my own idea of what it is that I like and what I want. And I realized that that goes on in with, with the women in general. And I exposed that. And, you know, like the dating here in the community has been tough for me after I woke up and realized what was going on. And... You know, like, that's why it was like when I found your channel and you encouraged the passports and things like that, like, it was a good thing, you know, and like being able to travel and go different Mm -hmm. places and meet different people and knowing that I don't have to take the type of abuse and I can leave people alone where they at if they want to leave me alone, that it's totally fine. You know what I'm saying? Like. It's a part of growing up. It's a part of maturing. You know, we have to accept the environments that we're in, but at the same time, we don't have to succumb to them. It's always a solution to every problem, and everybody is different. Like, everybody probably have a different solution than what I found that worked for me, but at the same time, I have to do what's best for me, and that's one thing that I had to learn. I had to stop seeking validation from people that really don't have my best interests at heart. You know what I'm saying? And growing up, I was being trained to do that. You know, like if, you know, to to, to, uh, please others and to do others and and, and hope that I get a reward for it. And most of the times it was no reward for it. It Just they expected even more from me. And until I learned that, I, I kept on finding myself in that same cycle until I woke up and realized that, hey, I've been duped and coming to that realization at 38 years old, it was very hard for me to, like, it was very hard for me to accept. It took me a while. Like, I've accepted it. I'm not saying that I'm 100% healed from everything that happened, but I am on the pathway to healing from it. And so I understand what a lot of the men were talking about, like uh, Lord uh, Jatron, like his story really, I'm sorry, Jatron, his story really, like, you know, it, it, it really touched me because I could understand some of his pains. But that's all I want to say. Uh, Julian, uh, Harvey, what would you like to add to this conversation, sir? All right. Um, yeah. So I just want to say, you know, thank you, uh, Dennis uh, Sperling, for letting me uh, talk on your platform and uh, rest in peace to the late great Kevin Samuels and everything mm-hmm. like that. But I just want to say, you know, I want to start off by saying, you know, in my life experience, I can honestly say, you know, my father, he wasn't a good dude. He didn't take care of none of his kids. You know, unfortunately, my whole father's side was the the dead beats that a lot of these women talk about. Mm -hmm. But, you know, my mother, on the other hand, my mother is a, she was a, a, let me say, a different case. Like she was a... I I don't know. she, She started off right. She started off with a spark. And mm-hmm. then, you know, it ended up just terrible. You know, she gave, mm-hmm. I can give her, her props for giving me the strength that I do carry. You know, my mentality, me being a strong, as far as a mentally strong black man. I, I, she, you know, my father and my mama didn't teach me the life skills I need. I, I had to teach myself and I'm still teaching myself so I can be a successful black man and i'm old I'm, I'm 40 you know so so i could be so i'm still you're not old brother you're not old 40 is okay old. okay so i'm still striving you're to just be, getting started go ahead yeah i'm still striving to be a successful black man but you know my mother the toxicity of my mother to this day is just overbearing like you know it was you know she raised us and me and my brothers in struggle unfortunately and um Basically, she just had, you know, she she just wanted to to do her thing, and and, and you know, it was it was always her way or the highway. And I understand mm-hmm. that you raising young men, but it was always she used the system basically to 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 raise us, and that was toxic. It, she used the system to raise us and got stuck in it. You know what I mean? You mean like welfare or something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like social security, welfare, and it was just, mm-hmm. you know, and it was always toxic. Always mad, always not happy about something. You know, to this day, you know, um, she got so toxic to the point that even my older brother, he got two daughters. 
you know, she and I, I realized that because I'm not speaking to her. I haven't spoke to her in like a year. I'm not speaking to her because she got to the point where that even my older brother, I, I realized that she hates men. 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 It, it, because my older brother got yeah, into yeah. it with her, his his ex wife, and they had to. They be he been fighting her to get custody of my nieces for the last eleven years. He finally got custody earlier this year. And she basically sided with for the last like five or six years going to get going to court against my brother, making all type of false allegations to get my own nieces taken away from her own son, took away from her own son to the point that my brother, my, my oldest niece wasn't even going to school for the last year because she was depressed. She's 17. My brother finally got her. He, he finally got her, put her back in school, have her going to night school. She got a job. He got my other, he, he, he also remarried. He got my other niece. They doing great. And my mother is siding with his baby mother against my brother. And she know he doing good. She know them girls. She got the nerve to text his phone and say, you got them in a, a, a hell hole. What are you talking about? You didn't have none of that smoke for the mother of them children. I had to tell my own mother I'd never speak to you again. I had to tell my own mother I'd never speak to you again. I had to tell my own mother I'd never speak to you again. I had to tell my own mother I'd never speak to you again. I had to tell my own mother I'd never speak to you again. You I can't I can't I can't I can't take that. You that's that's treason. You go you then she the the crazy thing, like I said, she started off great. She raised us to be great men. She raised us to never leave our kids. And you will go to the system and try to get your own son's kids taken away from. You know, so I don't know what to do at this point. It made me look at a lot of our sisters over here. Like man, I, I I don't know how to trust. Like I don't know how to trust. You know, some because I don't know what you what, what these women capable of doing. At this point, if I could see my own mother do my own brother like that, I don't even know what to say about a lot of these women out here. And and not to mention, this is not my only time seeing this. My best friend went through the same thing. My best friend went through the same thing with his baby mother and his mother. This man bought a whole house for his baby mother, thinking about marrying her, told her she could go to school. This man went, um, you know, his, his daughter was born. They had the baby shower at his brand new house. He bought his girl. He was at the baby mother's mother's house. And he told her, you know, he had a good job at the gas company. He said, I'm going to buy, um, I'm going, I'm, I'm going to put my baby on my insurance. Guess what the mother of his, his child said? She said, why can't he go on Medicaid and Medicare? He said, why, why would I put home Medicaid and Medicare when I got a good job and she could go on my insurance? This woman told her own daughter, I don't like him. It's going to be either me or him. If you choose him, you better stay over there. Don't ask me for nothing. His own baby mother tried to keep his daughter from him, went back with the mother, and they both conspired to keep his baby from her. He had to take her to court and get the rights to his baby back. Yeah, brother. I, I, you, you know, the thing is, man, um, it, it, let's let's get everybody in, and then okay. I want to get JJ in, and I want to get Floyd Holt in. Uh, no problem. Thank, thank you for allowing no, me to just talk. just hang in there for a minute, man, because we need to all... I want all y'all to talk to each other. JJ, what, what would you like to add to this conversation? And a shout out to Kay Petway. Go ahead. Hey, Avadee. Uh, I, I, I can relate to everybody that spoke so far, and I appreciate you for letting me come up, Dennis. You know something? I watched somebody on YouTube talking about how to deal with narcissism. The best thing to deal with narcissistic person is to cut them off, including a parent, a spouse, child, friend, whoever. Cut them off. It destroys them. You cut ties on them, it destroys them. 
And uh, but the, the, if you want to really make it more effective, is to rebuke them when they're wrong, force them to be accountable, and cut them off. Where they have to live with the last thing that you said before you cut them off. And then all these women that I mentioned in the uh, last time on the last stream, I see a lot of examples of this stuff. And uh, we're in this bondage over here in this modern Egypt. That's what God referred to this modern Babylon over here. Egypt is bondage. Yeah. And, and they, they're going to pay for it. And uh, I grew up through some things. I grew up through a divorce. My mother tried to turn me talks against my father. It didn't work. My father's 72. I took him to VA Monday. Uh, and then me and him pretty close. We, you know, we butt heads every now and then. But we 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 talk to it and we laugh and talk about whatever about these the same things we talk about about the weather about the politics uh, about a bunch of things and I'm thankful to have my father in my life Amen. and uh, he's partly why I had not lost my mind and I thank God for being in my life I thank God for him for my father being in my life and other people like other men in my life and stuff like this. And in, in my career, I've met all kinds of people of all kinds in my life. And it's probably your first time seeing me without my hat. And I thought I'd make a note of that. But uh, I take care of my hair. And I'm 43 years old. I want you all to take a good look at my face. I probably don't look my age. But, you know, I feel good about it. I'm aging gracefully. Amen. I don't have any kids at my, I don't have any kids at my age. I have very little gray hair. And, and, and things like that. I, I like to have fun. I, my therapy, y'all find something to keep y'all, uh, find a hobby. Yeah. I like to sing and play guitar. Mr. Holt, thank you for patiently waiting. What are your thoughts on this conversation? What would you like to share? Um, I like to, I, I would like to say uh, thank you for having me up. And this handy other bird, bird of story. It's softened my story up, but I think I just had the most, I had the most horrible upbringing. Like, um, I got blamed, I, I'm named after my father, but I got blamed for everything that he did throughout mm. my whole life. And I grew up hating that man until like two years ago when I found out the truth. Right. That my father had a whole nother wife, and basically I was a trap baby trying to, um, my mother tried to have me to get my, take, take my father from his wife. Mm. And back in those days, the side the side chick, you have a baby by Mary Do, you on your own, sweetie. And so I grew up hating my father until like for 38 years. And my upbringing was hell. My mother tried to kill me three times. So when these guys talk about something, they grew up seeing their mother in prostitution and drugs. I envy you, brother. Because mm. you, you all know the feeling and pain. But you know your own mother tried to kill you three times. She tried to kill me on my own one time by poisoning me. And two times she tried to kill me together with her on some kind of suicide mess. So I grew up in a lot of pain. And I just can't express that I wish I did. I wish I was in your guys' shoes growing up. Because I can't. It's hard for me to look at black women the same. Because yeah. I see my mother in them. The only time a woman ever been nice to me is, um, I think I was 35, like five years ago. When I noticed, uh, I, you know, I wanted, my, I would raise my whole bunch of women on that pro-black shit, pro-black shit, pro-black shit, pro-black shit, saying that I got to not only date and marry a black woman, I got to date and marry a single mother black woman, black mother, black woman. So one day I would look around my, my female, my family, I thought all my cousins, I thought half my cousins were just light skinned. Come to find out, they were mixed. Mm. Those helpers in my family raised me to take care of a single mother because they out here having babies by, by, by red men. So they wanted me to be pro black while they up here having babies by white men. So I, you know, in my fit of rage, I just say, fuck it. And I just ran out there to pick one random white woman. And that's the first time a woman ever treated me with kindness. Just because I had to buy her nothing. I didn't have to do anything. I mean, it was just so weird that I had to break up with her because I wasn't used to a woman treating mm. me with kindness. Right. And, That's and yeah. Yeah. Another thing, one was because 
I joined the military, so when I went by Iraq, you know, it, it wasn't nothing because I already had PTSD. I already were damaged. I already knew how it felt knowing that you're going to die. But you so, got me over in tears, man. So, to me, my years in the military and the war zone, it was kind of peaceful because I was away from my family. I was away from my mother. And still to this day, I can't I can't recall a day in my life I ever told my mother I love her. But I can't ever remember my mother just telling me that she loved me. And I struggle with that. I, you know, I see your other parents and the kids saying that they love them. And other parents telling the kids they love them. I can actually see that they mean it. And I just know that I'm going to have to die while you were sparing nothing like that. My mother, she's telling me that now because she's old and disabled and she needs money. Mm. But I know it's not, it don't come from just natural. It just comes through a condition. So, you know, I, I truly envy you guys because the way I grew up and what I experienced is, I, I don't know, I, I just can't describe it. And you you, you sometimes it. I get lost in it. And mm -hmm. So when I be dating non-black women, I see all the other black women talk about some, um, I'm a cool, I'm a sellout. You hate black women. <sighs> I, I, like, I don't hate you. I just don't trust you. And I see my mother in you. And I don't want to be nowhere near you. And it's just, they would tell me just to get over it. But these same black female, they might have an ex boyfriend to cheat on and damn it for life. And you just can't you can't tell them to get over it. But they tell me to get over my pain. I, I, I thought it was just alone, just with some well well, you know, with this toxic mother. But just you know, being you know, just watching your channel and hearing the other brother talk, you know, it just I don't know, I'm kinda of sad because I could relate to them, but I hate to relate to my other brother through pain that we suffer from our mother. I know, I know. But but let me say this and shout out to Angel Griggs and um B.H. Wendell. It is embarrassing. You know, I wrote a whole book about how I didn't know who my real dad was till 10 years ago. I wrote a whole book about how I found out at 10 years old, you know, that the person I thought was my dad wasn't. I talked about how I was abused as a young boy. You know, I, I talked about all of that in the book because once you talk about it, you take the embarrassment away and you empower other people. Like your story and I hate to say it, brother, but your story, you and Lord Geotron, y'all make, y'all give me hope. And you give a whole lot of other these people hope because if you guys can go through what you came through and still be there, you see what I'm saying? Um, and still be in the fight, so to speak, it gives us hope. And so I don't want you to ever be embarrassed about this. I'm, brother, like, I, I love you, brothers, you know, and we're all we have. White men are not going to understand what you're going through. Black women ain't trying to hear what you're dealing with. Only other black men will really understand what you're going through because they grew up in the same circumstance, especially you young brothers who are under 40 or 40 or under. Y'all know more than me because I'm damn near 50. I'm, I'm 48 now. And even though my situation was similar, it wasn't like y'all's. You see what I'm saying? Because society was a little bit different in the 80s and the 90s when y'all grew up. You see hey, what I mean? So... I ex go ahead, brother. But but the panel is open. The I, panel I, I, is I, open, brother. Speak freely. Go ahead, Mr. Holt. You're a real nigga for that, Mr. Holt. I, I yeah. would say um, I did experience like lesser pain with my mother. Uh, I mean, one day she just, you know, her homegirl, her friend that she met um, out of town, that she just drove me up there and left me. I, you know, I, I mean, I'm like, man, I don't know who the hell this well, lady is. Your mother drove you somewhere and, and just left you? Yeah, with one of her friends that I did not know. I done been there. I'm up here with this lady probably like nine months. Like, man, who the hell are you? She probably wait, 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 wait. you were with her nine months? I, I thought you meant like a week. She left no, you there no. for nine months? I was there for nine months. God damn. And I, you know, I didn't know that. The only thing I knew about this lady is just like, this is one of my mother's friends. And she was trying to discipline me, whoop me. But some kind of way, my grandparents find out where I were, 
and it just came when they got. I went overseas, and that was the first time I got treated well. You, you see what I'm saying? And I had to get used to it too. So don't feel guilty. That's how men are supposed to be treated. But go ahead, Lord. Exactly. The floor is open, guys. The floor is open. These women raised us to kill ourselves. 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 Not directly by suicide, but the, the chaotic mentality of a woman being instilled into a man's brain. Yeah, that's why women shouldn't leave. Because it's not meant for a woman to leave, bro. Right. Women are not equal to us. They're not the same as us. Yeah. It's a man's I'm, place to be the leader. So when we're being brought up being led by these women and it ain't even their place to lead, bro, yeah. number one, we we taking a backseat position. We're not being, we're, we're, every man is an alpha man. When you, If you're born with a dick, you're alpha. Because if you're a man, you're meant to lead. You're created in the image of God, bro. Every man is meant to lead. Because if you're a man, you're meant to lead. You're created in the image of God, bro. Every man is meant to lead. Because if you're a man, you're meant to lead. You're created in the image of God, bro. Every man is meant to lead. Because if you're a man, you're meant to lead. You're created in the image of God, bro. Every man is meant to lead. Because if you're a man, you're meant to lead. You're created in the image of God, bro. Every man is meant to lead. I, w I want y'all to hear me out real quick, okay? I just... Like, this is not a subject that we can deal with in an hour or two hours on YouTube, okay? I want you guys to get 25 bucks, get your health insurance, and go get some therapy. The hardest thing you can do, especially as a black man in America, is admit that your mother was a horrible human being. Is admit that your mother was a horrible human being. Is admit that your mother was a horrible human being. Is admit that your mother was a horrible human being. That's hard. And some of you guys have stories that are worse than other people's stories. But I need you guys to get therapy because, see, my goal here is to have happy, healthy, strong black men who are confident in themselves, who are, who are mentally stable, who are mentally healthy, who are emotionally stable. And I can't do that in two hours. I'm not a therapist. The other thing I need you to do, in other words, get professional help. The other thing I need you brothers to do is cut off the bleeding. Stop going around those people. Stop going around those people. Stop trying to change those people. They are not going to change. Sometimes you just raised up around demons, as they say. in the You see what I mean? And you're not going to change those people. You got to get up away from around them. You understand what you hope that they would be is not what they are. And you got to accept those people for who they are. You're not going to change people. Separate yourself from them. Cut them off. Don't go to the backyard barbecue. What do they call it? The cookout? I'm not going to the cookout. I don't need the pig feet, the collard greens, the cornbread. I'm good. God gave you something that allows you to go off and start your own family. God gave you something that allows you to go off and start your own family. God gave you something that allows you to go off and start your own family. God gave you something that allows you to go off and start your own family. Anywhere in the world. The other thing is, once you separate yourself from those toxic people, I want you to go find people. Find people that help bring about peace of mind and happiness. I don't care what color the woman is. As long as she treats you with respect and love and admiration. And I'm talking to you like I'm your father. I'm talking to you like I'm your uncle. I love you. I'm telling you it's perfectly acceptable for you to find peace of mind and happiness. You want to go blackity black? Okay, the whole world was run by black men. We were the first men on this planet. So therefore, everything in it is ours. If you want to go like that, of course, my preference is that you deal with women of African descent, but it's women of African descent all over this planet. The most important thing is you find women who respect you, who love you, who admire you. And let me tell you something. Respect is not something you have to earn. Respect is something that you you entitled to as a man. When you go to South America, even little boys, baby boys get respect. They eat with, they eat with their daddies because that's the respect that a man is due. They call him poppy. You don't have to do anything. You see what I mean? So if, you, if you're in a situation where a woman is forcing you to earn her respect, that means she's a prostitute. Because you got to pay for her respect. You exactly. got to pay for everything else. So what are we talking about? Get some professional help. Separate yourself from those people who are causing that trauma and reintroduce that trauma. And then start putting yourself, either be by yourself or be around people who can help bring peace to your household.
And that includes your kids too. You don't deal with this anymore. You're grown men, you're free men, you're God's sons, God loves you. That's what I'm telling y'all. Okay, now, I mean, I, I can't, I, there's so much more work that needs to be, there's so much more work that needs to be done here. This is a topic that nobody wants to talk about. So as you can hear, that's a lot to take in now, isn't it, family? That's a lot to take in now, isn't it, fellas? That's a lot to take in. Now you can also understand why many black males have a black male hatred for other black males. A lot of these young males, a lot of these males are dealing with issues stemming from their mother's bad choice. Let me explain it to you so you can get a better understanding. Our mothers were wrong. What our mothers were so, was supposed to do was stick by the man that got her pregnant or stick by the man she said I do to. And I am including and accounting for the males that uh, were abusive to her. I'm accounting for all of it. The only ones that I can see that get a pass are the fathers or males that were raping them. The only ones that get a pass are the fathers or males that were trying to kill them. But if it's an economics issue, the, the woman was supposed to sit there and deal with those traumas, those issues alongside her husband, the male she allowed to get her pregnant. If that male is cheating on her and he's not bringing home STDs, then that female was supposed to sit there and deal with it. What I'm explaining to you is because our mothers and I'm speaking as a general collective, not an absolute, not on an individual one-on-one -on -one specific basis. If my father cannot find a job and he says, I can't stay here, I can't find a job. I need to go wherever I got to go in order for me to get a job. That female was supposed to go with that male to go get that job. What do I mean? I'm explaining it to you in simplest forms. If he has to go to Detroit, because they're going to hire him in Detroit. Wherever she's living or they are living, even if they don't go together, allow him to go, allow him to establish the foundation, get the job, and then six months, a year, or three years later, then bring you and the baby to Detroit, wherever you're coming from. What our women have decided to do is, is break away from the men. And because the Females have decided to break away from the men. They came up with a bunch of excuses to say that the men were the cause. Sexual liberation. Now these males are sitting around here with all kinds of trauma. And nobody is reaching out to these males. Nobody is trying to heal these males. Nobody is trying to say I was wrong and try to put these males on the right path. When you hear me talk, and I'm trying to give it to you with the most simplest words, you got to get around other men. You have to get over your daddy issues. You have to get over your father issues. You have to get over them and get around other men. And once you get around other men, you have to express your thoughts. Now you can understand why when we see other men, we go into fight mode. I'm also trying to get you guys to understand how you, why black women are for some reason protected. Weaker men are protecting black women. This is why you are here, Dennis, or whoever, talk about a simp chip. As soon as you hear, as soon as black men hear, anybody, especially black men, speak about correcting the behavior of black women, you will see or hear other black men try to kill that noise. Weaker men are protecting black women. Black women are wrong for what they do. Yes, white supremacy racism is a factor. I'm not telling you that it's not a factor. I'm trying to tell you order of operations. Order of operations, we have internal issues. And our enemies, including these immigrants that just came across the border last night, are looking at the way we conduct ourselves and taking advantage of our weaknesses. Hispanic women are going to cater to black men because they're trying to get in. 
And yes, they may never divorce a black man, but they're trying to get in. And since they're trying to get in, they're going to use the fact that black women don't like black men. And that small little crack, that small little, uh, it allows them the leverage <clears throat> that they need in order to accomplish the goal that they need to accomplish. White women are seeing chinks and cracks and they are exploiting the chinks and the cracks. Some of them want them just for resources. Some of them want it just for a green card. Some of them want it just because they themselves have been abandoned. They're the black sheep of their tribe. However term you want to call it, they see how we are moving. And then that gives them a way in. So we have a lot of internal issues as well as we have external issues. But we cannot fix our external issues, not until we deal with our internal issues. And one of, uh, one of if not the major issues, the biggest issue is we as black men don't like black men. We hate each other. And if we hate each other, then by default, we're going to war with each other. And the female doesn't have anything to do with it. We're just going to war with each other because we're stemming from or we're dealing with daddy issues. So as soon as we get the opportunity to pop off on another male, we're actually popping off on our fathers. We're not popping off on the male, the stranger that just said whatever he did, it did whatever he did. We're popping off on our fathers. We're popping off on our fathers because our mothers have made us pit bulls. Our mothers have made us weapons towards masculinity. Our mothers have made us agents of mass destruction towards black hetero males. And what I am trying to explain to you guys with your political vote, with your economics, with understanding the history, until we as black men stop looking at each other as enemies, more so as brothers and allies, then the rest of our community is going to fail or suffer because it's it's because it's on us that all things are 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 it's on us that all things are built. We heterosexual black men, we are the foundation of all of this. All means all. And once we come together, and I mean we as in males, I'm explaining to you why why we can't do it together. She's un too, too untrustworthy. She's too emotional. She's too unreliable. If that female, listen to my words, if your female is not willing to go through the training, is not willing to go through the self-defense classes, is not willing to arm herself, then she's going to harm herself. You remember the quote? Remember the saying, check yourself before you wreck yourself? Our women have decided not to do these things that is in the best interest of our children. She says, as long as I am female, not paired off with you, black male, then white supremacy, racism, race soldiers are not going to target me. So I am, it'd be in my best interest to separate myself from you. That's one part of the sword. However, women have been operating anciently as it pertains to power. The desire for power is older than the um, escapism of white supremacy racism. She wants power. She wants power so she can come and go as she see fit. She wants power so she can use her body full autonomy as she see fit. She's too untrustworthy. Until the mass collective of women say, black man, I choose you and I'm going to be loyal to you no matter what. Within reason, you can't ask her to do these things. She's not suffering to the same extent that you black men are. She gets a pass. She gets a pass because, because all she got to do is show a little thigh to get by. Yes, when you listen to black women and you hear other black men, there you can't say that we are being attacked 50-50. It, it's, it's, it's not even relevant to have that debate. The numbers are telling you that. But reason why you're hoteppers, your queen mother goddess, 
your black woman is the queen mother of all civilization. The reason why they continue to keep saying 50-50 is because they are pandering to the women. And what they're trying to do is empathize or sympathize with the female so they can grab her emotionally. What I'm saying to you as far as numbers are concerned, why would you attack the female to the same and exact degree, degree when you know she's not that much of a threat? I don't need to, I, what, like the quote says, what's understood, what's understood should not be explained. So I shouldn't have to explain all these things all of the time. In class, I will. But on a one-on-one -on -one debate where we just sitting around shooting the breeze, talking to each other, you and I are supposed to be vibing. You and I are supposed to understand we got work to do. You and I are supposed to understand you can't put that female on that list, not at the top of the list. You can't. That female only becomes top of the list after she proven herself, not out of the gate. That female only becomes top of the list after she's bore you children and she says, I choose you no matter what. I'm going to be loyal to you. I'm going to be faithful to you no matter what. When that female says, and she, well, she doesn't have to say it verbatim, but when she gives you the idea that she's not going to leave you just because you cheated, when she tells you that, that the mission is more important than all those little um, bygones and, and nuances in between. When she speaks in that language, then you put her on top of the list. Because then she becomes an extension of you. But if a female come out of her mouth saying, man, he cheated on me, so therefore I'm going to atom bomb the family. Nah, she ain't supposed to be on that list. Therefore, you ain't supposed to be getting her pregnant. If that female says um, um, anything in a manner of me first, you're not even supposed to make her your wife. If that female is moving in a manner to where she's not going to be a team player, nah, fam, you can't put her on that list. You can't get her pregnant, and you can't even try to go out there and, and, and help her change her flat tire. She's off limits. We don't protect the disobedient women. We don't protect the, the disgruntled women. We don't protect the contrite women. We don't protect the argumentative women. We don't protect the hearty women. We don't protect the women that are more are more of a threat than a um an uh, uh um a threat more of a threat than a um than an asset. We don't protect the women that are more of a threat than they are of than they are an asset. We only protect the women that are are doing what we ask. I don't want to use certain words because words are triggers, but the behavioral pattern says. If she's moving this way, which is in accordance to what the men are saying, that female gets our protection. She gets our love and our support. If that female is moving any way other, nah, she's left out there by herself. And she could come on the internet and blackmail, hate, and ain't nobody protecting us. Nah, we ain't playing that game. You guys got, you females got us going out there stupid. And we are only killing ourselves because you women are playing stupid. What I'm showing you this video for black men is to show you that we have severe trauma stemming from our childhood, from our mothers. Mothers didn't love us and they didn't do what was in our best interest. Time and time again, we are telling you what was in our best interest. You give us a father. Whether it be our biological or whether it be a step, but you give us a father. That's our best interest. What was in your best interest is not in our best interest. And not only had the son said that, the daughters are saying they should have had their fathers. What I need you black men to understand is we got, we got serious issues that we need to overcome. And the only way we can overcome them if we do what these men, speak it. Speak it to other men. Express your thoughts and ideas to other men. So we can get over our trauma. We don't have to worry about what the women are doing and because once we get our act together, then they're going to get their act together. Because one thing that women, one thing about all women, for the most part, they don't want to work. Women think they're smarter than black. Black women think they're smarter than black men. They do. Black women think they are better than black women, black men. They do. This isn't white supremacy racism. This is nature. She thinks she's smarter than you because she's constantly saying, 
if you were smarter than me, then how come you didn't know that I was manipulating you with my body? That's what she's saying. So if she can pull the wool over your eyes with her body, what she is saying then in turn is apparently you're not as smart because you keep falling for the same trick. And it has not that those two in our world, those two things don't mean anything. But in her world, that does, because if she can take any form of power away from you, that's leverage for her. I don't like to give not even my wife, not even my daughter, the trade secret. I'm trying to explain to you males. They really believe they're smarter than you. Yes, they go. The reason why they go to white supremacy or they go to any of our natural enemies is because our natural enemies is giving them a leg up or an advantage over us to keep us in our place so to speak notice black women are not going to college getting masters getting doctorates becoming mit graduates with african-centered um, African-centered education then bringing that education back to the hood and raising and marrying black men. Notice they're going somewhere and they're learning 31 damn languages. It has nothing to do with Africa. It has nothing to do with black people. Notice they're going somewhere and they're studying robotics and they're becoming IT and they're becoming all those things but none of the things that they're learning are, are things or are skills or trades that can be applicable to the reunification or and the um the 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 making black families stronger and better they're not learning those things they're learning all things european they're learning all things eurocentric or all things asian in order to have the upper hand over us these black females are not learning things to to rebuild our community or nation they're talking about they're in construction and they're in this and they're in that. Those women get those skills, get those trades so that they don't have to rely, depend or ask us for assistance. But none of those things are meant to build or repair black families and community. Black men are trying to repair black families and community. Black women are not. The reason why she believes she's smarter than us is because she's the enemy is showing her how to defeat us. But the enemy, if you take away the enemy, then even if she has the book, she can't really do much with it. She doesn't have, she's not built with that. It's not that we're dumber. We're being attacked. We're being attacked by our mothers. We're being attacked by our sisters. We be we are being attacked by all elements. And then when we do survive, when we do come out of it, you don't see black women saying, "Um, you did a good job. I respect you. So let me fall under your system, structure, leadership, and order. Even when we come out of it, black women are saying, how did you do it? And I explained to you before, they're not saying, how did you do it? as it can be perfected and shown other young men how to do it. They're asking you the question, how did you do it? So that she can learn how to do it so she doesn't have to fall up under your system structure, leadership, and order. Black men, we have to come together as comrades. Black men, we have to come together as, as a gang. And we have to think of the brotherhood, which is, has to be more important than the sisterhood. We have to. Because if you don't get it together, these people groups will annihilate you. Listen to the Asians. They're trying to undo affirmative action. Listen to whites. They're still trying to keep you off the job. Listen to the Hispanics. Every other people group is moving male-centered. The black family, the black American family is the only one that moves as a matriarch. Where the women are in charge, where the women have the final say, where the women have the most say. And that's the family that's at the bottom. That's the people group that's at the bottom because the women are in charge. And women don't need, women technically do not need to be at the top rung of any system. The only thing a female needs is to know that she's not going to be raped. And to know that she can make it from the womb to the tomb, 
with the least amount of resistance. She doesn't need a Bentley. She doesn't need a, a mansion. She doesn't need those things. Those are clout things, but she doesn't need. What she needs to know is that she, her, she will not be raped. And <clears throat> she needs to know that she can make it from the womb to the tomb with the least amount of resistance. And the system of racism and white supremacy gives her that. Me as a male, I want more. I'm going to try to get more to try to protect my my family. I'm going to try to get more to protect future generations. So every son or every daughter that I have, as they are on their lived journey, these are the things that must be in place so it's easier for them so they can keep advancing. Women, on average, don't think like that. Women do that physically just to show men, nah, nah. I did it without you, but women don't do it to say it's the right thing to do. Women do it as a as a as a na na to boo boo, but they're not doing it because it's the right thing to do. They're doing it just because they can. I'm gonna shut you up. Don't tell me what to do. You think you can tell me what to do? But if we didn't challenge them, if we didn't sit here and hold court with them, they wouldn't try to behave. They would status quo. They would business as usual. So what I'm saying to you is the only thing that we need to do is move for ourselves. Before we continue to have babies with these women, we need to stop, stop, stop and get a collective of ourselves and work on ourselves, work to unify the brotherhood, work to build the brotherhood. Warrior class, zoo, rise up. Warrior class, zoo, show up. Warrior class, zoo, speak up. Warrior class, zoo, smoke them out. Peace, blessings, and black love. Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Death is better than bondage. In this campaign, we are coming to get our check. Fair Use Act Disclaimer. This site is for educational purposes only. Copyright Disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. Allowances made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, education, and research.